One of my early memories as a child was I was always building things. I used to take things apart as well and see how they work. My mum and dad used to take me to the Christmas lights to look at them in London. And we looked at the wind displays in Harrods and Selfridges. And I wasn't interested in what was going on, what everybody else was looking at. I was usually on my hands and knees just trying to work out how everything worked. My interest in building continued. And when I got my paper round, I saved my pocket money really hard to buy myself my first remote controlled car. I built it and I drove it up and down the street for hours and hours. Little did I know then, I was already learning a skill that would prove invaluable. I grew up in the family home, and another early memory I have is observing my dad going to work on a job he really disliked. He stuck it out for 20 years, and he was offered redundancy and couldn't take it quick enough. Another early lesson, I was gonna try and find a job that I enjoy because you're a long time working. I finished my education at 16, and I found myself a job very quickly in IT. Thankfully, I did enjoy that job. I really enjoyed it. But I just felt that I could be doing more with my life. So keeping the full-time job, I decided to set myself up a new sideline, a new business. My retired dad was trading in collector's cards. So I offered him to set him up in business on this new platform called the World Wide Web. Dad's not into technology, so he declined my offer, but I still saw the potential of, of the business and the card trading things. So I set up my own website, buying and selling collector's cards. Bit of competition for Dad. <laughs> and um, it went well. It became a lucrative sideline. I still have my full-time job. It's still running today, and I've also been trading on eBay, doing the same thing since 1999. Now, not being one to be um, sitting around idle for too long, between the quiet period between Christmas and New Year in 2006, I decided I was going to start myself a new hobby. I was sitting into remote control cars. It, this is escalated to boats and planes, but I wanted something a bit bigger. So I looked on the internet, and I found the Dalek Builders Group. Now, having done some research, unfortunately, Dalek wouldn't fit in my car. I couldn't take it to events. So with the idea of a film or TV character, what else could I build? This is when I found the R2-D2 Builders Group. Now, I was a huge Star Wars fan. It was one of the first films I saw. I was seven when the first film came out, and I went to see it at the cinema. So that's it. Decision made. I'm going to build myself a film accurate, full-scale R2-D2. Now, to say my wife is understanding is an understatement. <laughs> Not only was it going to take up all my spare time, it was also going to take up my spare space, resulting in me demolishing my garage and building a new workshop down the end of the garden. This was before the hobby even actually started. Thanks to the R2 Builders group, um, a couple of the guys got access to the original R2-D2 droids at Lucasfilm, and they took measurements and drew up plans to share with the group. So we had the plans... Um, people build them out of different materials. I use a type of plastic called styrene. Some people use aluminium, um, wood, or more recently, 3D printing. Once you finish painting it, it should look fine. It, they should all look the same. You can't tell the difference. So in January 2009, my R2-D2 was complete. <laughs> Come on, R2. <laughs> So unfortunately, at the same time as me close to finishing R2-D2, my job came to an abrupt end because the company I'd been working for... <laughs> enough. <laughs> the company I'd been working for full-time for 23 years were taken into receivership. My world was turned upside down. Thankfully, I had my sideline of my card business. But I also had a wife, two boys, and a rather large mortgage. Was my sideline going to support all that? Well, I went for it, and thankfully, it allowed us to keep our heads above water. At the same time, I've got a new member in the family. What I was going to do with him? It would be a shame to have him in the corner at home doing nothing. And I did have a point to prove to my friends and family why the hell I would build such a thing. So I joined a Star Wars, in, Star Wars costuming group called the Rebel Legion, and they kindly invited me to charity events and various comic cons and so on 
to show off my R2-D2. I had a huge sense of achievement. I could show people what I'd built, and things were good. So life was good. That could be where the story ends. But that's not why I'm here. Apart from my amazing wife, there's someone else I don't get to thank publicly very often, and that's Mary Franklin. Coincidentally, she did a TEDx talk here last year in Leamington Spa about fandom and the importance of fans. Well, I am proof of Mary's commitment to fandom. She worked for Lucasfilm at the time, and she became aware of me and my r 2 So she got in touch with me and started to find work for me, doing game launches, and even a TV advert, where Oliver Steeples and a fellow R2 builder myself took our R2s to shoot an advert for a large electrical store where R2 and C3PO break into the store and play with their products. <laughs> it took a week to shoot, and it was my first fully paid R2-D2 job. This is just as a fan. <laughs> Star Wars was becoming a part of my life. Um, it wasn't always paid. A lot of work was for charity, but I was doing what I enjoy. Time passed by, and out of the blue, Oliver gave me a call again, the guy I did the advert with. And he said, uh, Lee, do you want to come to Pyma Studios with me for a chat? I was like, well, what sort of chat? He said, well, it's r 2 d related. That's all I know. So, of course, curiosity got the better of me. I went along, and we had our meeting, and one meeting turned into two meetings, with who turned out to be the production team of the relaunched Star Wars franchise. Disney had just taken over Lucasfilm. At the end of the second meeting, I heard the unforgettable words, you've got the job. Now, maybe I was naive, I don't know, but I actually didn't realise we were there for a job interview. Maybe consultants or something like that, I'm not sure. But we were offered the job. We were going to be building the R2-D2s for the new Star Wars films. <laughs> <laughs> My start date was two months away. I had to wait two months. For that period, I thought it was just a huge wind-up. I was under a non-disclosure agreement where I could only share this story with my wife. I even made up a job and lied to my sons and said that I, Daddy's not working from home anymore and he's got a new job in IT. Two months dragged by and the start date came. Now, as an outsider to the industry, I was a bit apprehensive, wondered how we'd be received. Thankfully, we were greeted by the um, Creature Effects Department, this is the department I work for, and they made me feel very welcome. We were shown our workbenches. It was quite intimidating. A lot of the guys had worked on iconic films like Labyrinth, the Harry Potter films, and many other films. You know, it, it was quite intimidating, but it, it was fine. They were very welcoming. So it was, it was amazing. Thankfully... My life to my two sons didn't have to go on for too long. Thanks to the director, J.J. Abrahams, tweeting the first publicity photo for The Force Awakens, high from the workshop. This is how my friends and family found out what I was really doing. <laughs> it wasn't just R2-D2s we built. We built other droids as well, which we built before we even started on R2-D2. They were smaller droids. I think they were just trying us out first and just seeing what we were capable of building. Mouse droids, some people may have recognised them from all the Star Wars films. That's something I built with my initials on the side, sneakily. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we built four R2-D2s. They were for different terrains and as backups. And it was quite different building the R2-D2s as a hobby compared to the film industry. In the film industry, you've got the luxury of the excellent machinery and the talented crew around you to help out. But we do have deadlines. Now, as a hobby, do it when you feel like it. <laughs> Doesn't quite work like that in the film industry. Um, we were given a deadline which was during filming. So filming had started and we were still building R2-D2, which was fine. And thankfully, we delivered. R2-D2, all four of them were built in time. No problem at all. It all went smoothly. It wasn't just building the R2-D2s. Oliver and I were fortunate enough to operate them on set as well. All four of the R2-D2s we built were remote control. So we shared the work, and it turned out to be about 50-50. 
I was informed quite early on that any hold-ups in filming, such as droid malfunctions, do cost thousands of pounds a minute. So no pressure there then. Thankfully, that didn't happen. We finished filming, and a few months later, Oliver and I were flown out to LA for a huge event called Star Wars Celebration, where we were introduced to the fans. Um, it was quite a memorable event, because somebody else that everybody met for the first time, and that was BB-8. The film industry wasn't for Oliver, and he did just the one film. But I have continued on this amazing journey, looking after R2-D2 in all the recent Star Wars films, always operating him on set, and I've been part of an amazing creature effects crew where I've built many other droids for all the new films as well. The team built a number of these droids. There was about four or five of us building all them over a period of time just for Solo, the Star Wars movie. And they put me to good use, Lucasfilm have, where I've gone on to do um, various promotional events and travel the world to promote Star Wars and all the new films. And I've even done the Oscars, where my dressing room was next door to someone almost as famous as R2-D2. That's right, that's Lady Gaga. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to name some of the droids myself as well. I name a lot of them after the department, after some of my work colleagues, but of course I've named one after myself. This is using my initials, this is the LT droid. <laughs> in uh, the Disney parks in America, they have the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge Lands, where some of the product branding has got my name on it. <laughs> Plus, one of the more mischievous members of the UK R2 Builders Club has created the Lee Towsey Fan Club, <laughs> where T-shirt sales went well and raised a lot of money for charity. My wife became the 100th member recently. Why the hundredth member? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> a lot of people get into this industry by studying hard and going to university and not taking the path that I took. I was 43 when my life was changed by a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> it's never too late. You should do what you enjoy and take that thing and see how far you can take it. You never know what it might lead to. My two sons are starting out on their career path now, and I'd like to thank them for looking after the joys today. They're a fine example of who this talk is for. And thank you all for listening. May the force be with you.